Self-knowledge removed as light removes darkness. There's a guy, there was a guy, servant, he went to his master and uh, reported for work in the morning. And he said, hey boss, how you doing? And the master said, fine, fine. Said, what, what do you got for me today? And the guy says, well, I got a job for you. Uh, I want you to take this bucket and this shovel, and I'd like you to go down to the basement, the cellar, the, and I'd like you to shovel all the darkness out, because it's dark down there. I've got some work to do. Will you please, like, shovel the darkness out and make it okay? Because I can work. Yes, sir! I'll do it, no problem. He grabs the shovel and the bucket, and he goes down the basement, he fills up a bucket full, and then he throws it out the door. And he throws it out, throws it out the door. And he's working for about an hour, and he, he notices it's not getting any, any lighter in there. Huh? So he says, goes back to the boss, and he says, Hey, boss, you know, I've been working for an hour, and it's not getting any lighter here. Do you, do you have any other suggestions? This doesn't seem to be working. And the boss said, Why don't you turn on the light? Uh, yeah, so, huh? Why don't you seek knowledge? Knowledge is going to get rid of this problem. No action is going to get rid of this problem. Seek to understand. The self, oh, the self seems limited because of ignorance. I believe that I'm this, you know, limited, inadequate little worm. Wiggling around in samsara, the garbage heap of samsara, nibbling on bits of, you know, garbage. Even though I'm the cause of the whole universe, nothing exists without me, I believe I'm what? This little tiny person, right? wanting this and wanting that, afraid of this and afraid of that. Yeah. So it's because what? Ignorance is, is operating in my mind. Destroy ignorance and the limitless self is revealed like the sun when the clouds pass away. Nice. It's simple, huh? Elegance. He was a poet. Shankar wrote a lot of poetry. He wrote beautiful poetry. And uh, how do you do this? Constant practice of knowledge. Constant practice of knowledge neutralizes ignorance as a base neutralizes an acid, purifying the individual self. I got to, I need to, like, uh, practice this knowledge. That I've cheated on this, this verse. I have to tell you where I cheat, okay? I'm a bad boy, I do cheat. And, and, but I will tell you when I cheat, so you don't get cheated. And the, the, he says, as the base neutralizes an acid. That's, that's how knowledge basically works. You, you have this acid at the stomach, you're ignorant, and life is painful and uncomfortable. You take the knowledge, it's like an Alka-Seltzer. The Alka-Seltzer goes in, uh, it neutralizes the acid, but it's no longer a base. The knowledge disappears, the acid disappears, and your stomach is okay. So, uh, this is how knowledge works on ignorance. It neutralizes it. But, of course, they didn't have Alka-Seltzer in those days. Uh, that was a long time ago. There was no convenience stores, no Alka-Seltzer. So they had to do it a different way there. In the verse there is called the katika nut. It says, just as a katika nut removes impurities from the water. And it's a really interesting, uh, interesting little uh, metaphor. Because in, in the, in the, if you've been to the India, you've been to the Ganges River, the Ganges, particularly in this, is, 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 is a very silvery river. It, it's not blue or green. It's, it's basically kind of a, uh, it has a strong silver, it has a greenish tint to it, but it's basically kind of silvery. 
And that's because it's carrying particles of silicon. Uh, these, these, uh, which is a real reflective silvery substance. And the rocks in the, up there in the Himalayas are very, very laden with silicon. And, and that, um, in the spring, particularly in the high water, there's so much silicon in the water that you can't drink it. it, it, it it's hard on your stomach. So they, they, they need to get that silicon out of the water so that you can purify it. And the way they do it is there's a, a tree has a nut. It's called the katika nut. And they grind it up. They pound it into a powder. And they throw that, a handful of that in the, in the, in the vessel, the water vessel. They throw a handful of it in there. And what it does is that it, it attracts the silicon to it. So particles of the silicon adhere to the, the part of the, the nut. And, and it, it spreads out on the surface of the water like a film, like a fine film. And then as, as, as it sucks up those particles, huh, it gets heavy. And the whole film just slowly, slowly sinks attracting more and more particles, it gets heavier and heavier and heavier, and then all of the silicon collects on the bottom, and then they drink the water off the top. So he's saying practice of knowledge is like that. It takes away your impurities. Huh? Slowly, huh? attracts those impurities, burns them up, and leaves the mind pure and clear. And constant practice of knowledge means what? We call it, I call it taking a stand in awareness as awareness. It means, huh? When your mind is there cooking up all sorts of things for you to do that you think is going to solve your existential problem, whatever it is, huh? or or whether it's cooking up some fears, telling you what not to do, until then you you stand, you look, you sit down with your mind, and you have a little conversation. You should be friendly to it, be nice to it, but basically, uh, you you have a conversation and you talk to it reasonably, and you give it the teaching. You you get you know you you say it's like a little baby. You say, there there, take it easy. We you know you we'll talk about what you want here, huh? and give it a little cookie and a cup of tea and glass of milk, and then start educating it. Huh? You you can make friends with your mind. You can convince it that it'll be a lot happier uh, just sitting still and enjoying itself rather than it will be run, running away from something that it's bothering it or you're know, chasing after something that it thinks it wants. It will just be very... <coughs> and you can give it the logic, whatever the logic is. Oh, you I've already got you. I've already got what you think. I need. Huh? The mind always thinks it needs, but you say, oh, "No, I've already got it." What do I? Got? I got the bliss, baby. I am the bliss. So you say we should chase this and that because it'll make us happy. Huh? I say I'm already happy. How about that? And the mind says, "Just a minute." So then you have an argument with yourself. Well, this is a. This is just a steady. It's a constant conversation. <laughs> Because what? All the time in your mind there's this feeling that you want something. That, that's a sign that ignorance is operating. Everything, if you look at yourself, if you look at your life, everything is actually fine and it's all taken care of. You've got your three square meals a day, you've got a roof over your head, huh? you've got clothing on your body. What more do you need to be happy? Do you really need anything more to be happy? No, you don't. Thank mm-hmm. you.